whether you're in the kingdom of God or not. Whatever you have inside of you, whatever you listen to and, and put your eyes on and open your gates to, that gets into an abundance down in your heart. And now that it's an abundance down in your heart, that's what you're going to talk about. Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durbin with your family of Faith Victor Church right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 1 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And that is a good thing to know in the days we're living in. Uh, God's placed something in my heart for this month. We're going to look at words. How important is the words that we speak? And, uh, you know, growing up in a traditional church, we weren't taught this, you know, and and uh, we would we would say foolish things one to another. You know, I'd get in a fight with my sister and I'd say, I wish you were dead. Things like that. You know, just stupid uh, conversation, uh, not realizing that our words have power. And, you know, we pick on each other in school and we'd say uh, little cliches like sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never harm me well that's that's a that's a fallacy words will harm you and uh, you don't think so just think about when somebody says something ugly to you and hurt your feelings well if your feelings can be hurt then your physical body can be hurt. Your finances can be hurt. Your relationships can be hurt. Everything about you can be hurt, see? And in the same fashion, when somebody says something ugly to you that hurts your feelings, somebody can say something comforting to you and it makes you feel better. Same thing with your physical body, your finances, relationships, see? So, uh, that's what we're going to be looking at this entire month, you know, and, and uh, you get the opportunity to go and, and uh, look up uh, these uh, scriptures on your own after the program goes off. And also, we got a helpline, 24 hour, seven days a week, an active person on my staff is ready, and, and I got several, to, to help you and agree with you and intercede with you for your supernatural miracle. That number is 502-597-4357. And, uh, you know, after the program goes off, call, you know, or jot that number down or put it in your cell phone for when you might need it because we're a faith church here. We believe in miracles, see? So let's get into today's Bible lesson. We're going to start here in Proverbs 18 and verse 21. Now, this is a master key scripture. And when I say master key, when you understand this scripture, it unlocks other scripture. I have a master key to the church that I pastor. And one key unlocks all different kinds of doors, see, because I have the master key. Well, when you understand this verse, then it starts unlocking scripture to where you understand kingdom law, kingdom principles. So let's look at this in Proverbs 18 and verse 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, it's not talking about your ability to stick your tongue out at somebody. It's talking about the words that your tongue speaks death and life 
are in the power of the tongue. You could say it this way. Fear and faith are in the power of the tongue. You could say cursing and blessing are in the power of the tongue or are in the power of our words. See, that's why God sent his word. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And we know that that word was Jesus, see? So Jesus is the word. And we now have this word in what we call Bible form. See? And many lives in centuries before went without the word as we know it. See, this was not to decorate your coffee table. This was not to you know, have embroidered on a pillow on the couch. Wonderful if you got the embroidered, but it's, to, it's supposed to be embroidered in your heart because uh, the world speaks death. They just do. They don't know how to speak life. Why? Because they operate in fear. I mean, you got courageous, brave people that uh, are not... Uh, you know, you put it, we got brave men in, and women in, in our military. You know, they, they uh, would sacrifice their lives for the country. You know, that's, that's, that's bravery. That's courage. But yet that same individual can be afraid of lack, can be afraid of, you know, dying, uh, you know, with cancer or whatever. See, fear, fear is all around us. But God sent his word to produce faith in us so that you and I can rise above this fear-based, this curse-based, this death-based world and overcome it. So it says here, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. See, if, 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 if you are constantly speaking death, you are planting death seeds in your life. If you always got a fear that you're going to die in a car wreck, and, you know, if, if a car gets close to you, you just kind of like freak out, you know, and all that. You know, uh, you could be planting seeds that you're going to wind up in a car wreck, see? Why? They that love it or they that keep that on their tongue will eat or will receive the fruit, the harvest of what they've been saying. Words are seeds. And as you are planting seeds in, you know, that's why we send our kids to school because teachers are planting seeds of math, writing, and, 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 you know, English and, and all chemistry and all the different subjects that are out there, they're planting seeds and those seeds begin to grow. But they had to start with the ABCs. They had to start with the one, two, threes. And as they begin, as those seeds begin to grow, it gives something to build on. Well, the same thing in the kingdom of God. When you and I receive Jesus as our personal Savior, we still speak in death. We still speak in fear. Even though on the inside we became a new creation in Christ Jesus, we do not know the kingdom language. And the kingdom language is faith. The kingdom language is life. The kingdom language is blessing, see? And so it's left up to us how we're going to talk. God's not going to do uh, are talking for us. But now if we'll take what he has said and put what he has said into our ears and then let it get down into our belief system, our heart, our spirit, and then out of our heart, out of what we have treasured up down here, we begin to speak, we'll start seeing blessings. We'll start seeing health. See, 
we'll start seeing life like Jesus came to give it to us. Now, let's add some more to this. Let's go over here to Matthew and chapter 12. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is not in the power of a virus. Death and life is not in the power of a bullet. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. What are you saying over your children? What are you saying over your finances? What are you saying over the things that you have? See, you know, are you, uh, you, you may uh, have need of a better transportation, but what are you speaking over the transportation you got? That old piece of junk, I tell you what, Oh, that thing, I tell, I don't know what, and you're just always trashing it. Well, guess what? It has no choice but to have another flat tire. It has no choice but to quit on you. You keep speaking it. You say, well, Pastor Philip, I don't believe that. It don't make no difference whether you believe it or not. It's going to work. It'll either, it'll either work on the negative or on the positive. I choose positive. I choose to speak what God says. And I'm not talking about positive thinking. I'm not talking about, you know, that, uh, you know, we just say a bunch of positive things and, and our life becomes positive. I'm not talking about being optimistic instead of pessimistic. I'm not talking about that uh, kind of uh, soulish teaching. I'm talking about finding out what God's words have said. His words are spirit and they are life. And when you find out what God's words have said and you start consuming God's word, you start uh, not just reading it, you know, uh, just for 10 minutes in the morning and set it down, forget everything that's said. You know, you go to work and, and you tell somebody, they ask you, hey, did you, uh, did you have time with the Lord this morning? Oh, yeah. What would you read? Uh, well, I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> I'll be out and about in, in, in town, and somebody will come up to me, and they'll say, Hey, uh, preacher, I saw you on television, man. You was preaching a good message. I said, really? What was I preaching? Uh, I don't remember, but it was good. But if I asked you the score of the ball game, that you went to. Maybe even three years ago, your favorite team. You got statistics, boom, 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 boom. See, come on now. This has to become first place. If you want, you know, if you have, if you want your life just to go with the uh, you know, roll with the punches, I did that. Those punches hurt. I got tired of being punched. See, God never intended for you to be a punching bag. He intended for you to punch that devil right between the eyes, give him a big fat lip, and send him on his way, and you live the life that Jesus came to give us. John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have that life with abundance. See, how, how did you even come into the kingdom? Words, words, somebody told you with words about Jesus, or you read the word for yourself and saw what this word said, and then you said something along these lines, of, Lord, I believe, forgive me, come into my heart, words, words gave you the information about a life-changing experience and words in response made that experience real. Well, I'll tell you what, that's good right there. See, and God did not stop at you and I just escaping hell and going to heaven eventually when we die. There are things that accompany our salvation. We have a whole redemptive package but see, if we don't get into God's word and rightly divide it, 
then we can be li leaving a lot of stuff on the table. See, you know, when I when I first met my wife, I I had limited amounts of uh, food that I would eat. I was raised, you know, in Kentucky, and roast beef, mashed potatoes, carrots, corn, gravy. See, and then when I met her, she's got all this stuff that I ain't never seen before, and I wouldn't eat it. See, and she would say, you haven't even tried it. I don't like that. How do you know you don't like it? You never tried it. Take a bite of it. But see, it was unrecognizable to me. And she said, would you just please try it? And so I would try it. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. Now? I, 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 I like uh, different kinds of foods and foods I haven't tried before. Well, that's. But that's the way a lot of Christians are. They're raised in a traditional uh, uh, church, and you know they got the real roast beef, mashed potatoes, gravy, and carrots. And then when somebody like me comes along, preaching on the miraculous, on uh, the healing power of God, the prospering power of God, that you don't have to uh, let the world kick you around. That sounds like something strange to eat but I tell you what taste and see that the Lord is good oh yes he is and when you start to discover these truths it'll transform your life they're right here this is your speaker this is your speaker to your belief system now look at this in Matthew chapter 12 it says in verse 34 O oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? What he's saying is you can't. You can't uh, have poison in you and, and, and speak good things. Now, he goes on to say, For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. That is truth whether you're in the kingdom of God or not, whatever you have inside of you, whatever you listen to and, and put your eyes on and open your gates to, that gets into an abundance down in your heart. And now that it's an abundance down in your heart, that's what you're going to talk about. That's what you're going to speak. You know, I say this a lot when I'm preaching. You squeeze an orange, and you get orange juice. You squeeze a lemon, and you get lemon juice. You squeeze a Christian, you don't know what you're going to get. You might get some cussing. You might get some doubt and unbelief, fear. Or you might get no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue of judgment that rises up against me, I will condemn it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And my righteousness is of my God. See? See? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if death and life are in the power of my mouth, in the power of your mouth, then I have to get an abundance of life inside of me so that my mouth quits talking death and start speaking life. It, it quits. It doesn't speak fear. It speaks faith. It doesn't speak the curse. It speaks blessing. It doesn't speak the problem. It speaks the answer. Hallelujah. See, when when me and my wife first started learning this, we, we you know, this is thirty years ago, and we started speaking out what God said. And our Christian friends looked at us like we were nuts. They're like, how can you say that? Well, we're just saying what God said. And we quickly got tagged as extreme. See? But here it is three decades later. Me and my wife got a great marriage, debt-free, ministry debt-free. We're not living paycheck to paycheck by no means healthy. See, why? 
we stopped talking death. We started talking life. Not any life words that we came up with. Life words that we found in God's word. And we started speaking that. See? And it got, it got, we, we, we shut off everything. We shut off the TV. We shut off the radio. We didn't go to, we didn't go to the parties anymore. And the only place we went to was Bible studies and church. And the rest of the time we were at home, we were listening back in the cassette tape days. We were listening to messages and we were just, we were overloading just like we used to do with drugs and alcohol when we were sinners. We would take so much to where we'd pass out. Well, we, we would overload and, you, and it's hard to do. Overload on the word of God. We just consume it from the time we got up to the time we went to bed at night. See? And I remember being in a grocery store and uh, we were checking out and uh, when we got up there, the, the item we were purchasing because money was tight back in those days was half price and and, and the 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 clerk there said, oh, well, this is on sale. And I said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I thought to myself, where'd that come from? I said, well, I'm starting to sound like them people at church. But it came out of, a, out of genuine praise, see? And then we started finding ourselves with financial squeeze. And at first I'd have to think what does the Bible say about that financial pressure? Oh, yeah. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And so I'd quote that. See? And that's a, that's a, that's a starting point. The soul of faith recited, the spirit of faith speaking. But then it would get to a time when I didn't have to think about it. It would just come up out of my heart because out of the abundance of our hearts, we began to speak. And we would look at each other, me and my, my wife, we'd have the fire going in the fireplace. We didn't have no money, no food, no gas in the car. And but we got an abundance of God's word. And we'd look at each other and out of her heart, out of her abundance, she would say something. And out of my abundance, I'd say something. And we'd encourage each other by what God was saying out of his word. And what do we believe? Do we believe this? I mean, do you, do you believe the Bible? Or is this just something you run to at a funeral? Is this just something you run to uh, on Sunday morning when the preacher gets up to preach? But when this becomes your very life, Job said, I, I esteem God's word above my necessary food. Hallelujah. See, when this becomes first place and you start to, watch us now, replace death talking, curse talking, fear talking. When you start to replace that kind of conversation, those kinds of words with what God has said, your life will begin to turn around. And see, that, 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 that takes discipline. That takes somebody that means business, somebody that really wants to be a success. And we got people that are waiting for your call that will help you in whatever uh, situation you may be in. Here's, here's the great thing about the body of Christ. You might not be spiritually developed to that degree in faith yet, but you can call our help line and there are people, they're, they're, they're my staff. They've been with me 15 plus years, more than that really. And they're trained under this ministry. They know what the word says. They know how to address uh, different uh, situations with the word of God. And we're here for you. See, 502-597-4357, call that number. And, and uh, let us agree with you, for you, See, whatever, the, whatever your situation may be. But as you begin to, under, and we're going to be on this subject all month long, see, on how powerful words are. Words is what got you started.
started in the kingdom. But words were never intended for you to just get started. See, it's one thing to start the race. It's another thing to finish it, see. And uh, the more you understand how powerful your words are, you're going to be more careful in what you're saying. And, uh, you know, me and my wife, when we first started this, I would, I would watch her words and she'd watch mine. And she'd say something like, my feet are killing me. I'd say, ah, right there, I'd mark it down. And if I'd say something like, well, that scared me to death. What? You see, we check each other until we got speaking life constantly. Well, our time's gotten away from us. My favorite verse in the Bible, I'll leave with you. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Be a blessing. Awake to Righteousness with a daily devotional by Drs. Philip and Alberta Derber. In this powerful devotional, you'll learn the different aspects of the righteousness or right standing that Jesus has provided. Get the reality of what Jesus has done deep down inside of you to the point that every day you awake to righteousness. Awake to Righteousness includes 365 daily devotions accompanied by a master key verse and a scriptural meditation for every day of the year. Get your Awake to Righteousness devotional today. You can order online at our website or give us a call at 502-875-7886. Hey, I want to uh, tell you about a book I wrote, Circle of Faith. I was on a 21-day fast, and I asked the Lord, Lord, how can I teach my people faith? And I had an open vision. And in this vision, I saw this circle. And it starts at hope, goes to faith, tribulation, patience, promise, experience, back to hope. This is the circle of faith when you go on faith to faith. I think it'll be a blessing in your life. It's, it's helped many a person. Just contact our office and uh, we'll get that in your hands to you. And it, will, it, it, it explains a lot of things that uh, I didn't have anybody tell me when I was coming up. God bless you.